an epic wedding photographer. He shoots boudoir. He makes the most beautiful portraits of people. And I've had the opportunity to work with him. And in that opportunity, within that opportunity, I've seen how detailed he is when it comes to posing, light, and every little element of a photograph. You'll see some of his beautiful work within this booth, many, many pictures that he has here. He's a grand award winner in the wedding business multiple times, and he's just a very talented photographer and a great person to work with. Let me introduce to the Nikon stage, Nikon ambassador, Jerry Guiones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you so much, guys. So I'm not too sure if you're just simply tired and you wanted to sit down, or you're actually enthusiastic about what we're going to share today. But either way, we'll show you some really, really cool stuff. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to represent Nikon. Um, yes, it is Nikon. No matter what, where I go in the world, I mean, Nikon was created in Japan, and they pronounce it Nikon. Same, same with us in Australia. I'm going to stick to my guns, and it's Nikon. Because you guys will call it a Nikon lens, but then you'll say, Nikon, I'm like, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm here to represent Nikon here, guys, so thank you so much. Guys, I'm talking today about iconic photography. Now, it's hard to even claim, can you produce iconic photography, but let me rephrase it. Whenever I'm photographing either a wedding, a portrait shoot, I made it a commitment that every single time I pick up the camera, I want to walk away with one legacy shot. One shot that maybe a bride and groom can put up on their wall, a portrait client to have it as a keepsake, but something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different, that I'll never be able to do that photograph again because as a unique set of circumstances. It was that girl in that dress with that light at that time of day that perhaps we could only ever achieve something like this. So I want to show you some of those shots and show you how they were created and talk about it and have a bit of fun with you. Okay, so I was actually photographing a wedding and I often talk about creative triggers. As in, you walk past something and it triggers a thought process that gives you an idea and then you execute and do this shot. Now here, of course, is a behind the scenes photograph. Now what was my creative trigger? What did I see? Well, let, let me explain what happened. So I'm actually walking with the groom. The groom's right next to me. I was a little bit ahead of him. And as we were walking, I looked back at him and I saw his reflection of his silhouette against the glass. As I saw that, the bride was walking through the house and I saw her vividly through that window. So you know when you go window shopping and you do this and you can see vividly through the window? So I thought, wait a second, I've got an idea here. Without being too soppy about it all, I want to create a beautiful image that perhaps is a metaphor of them becoming one, okay? So then I thought to myself, I like, hey, have you got a ladder? I brought out a ladder. I got a shot of him, a silhouette of his profile. Can you picture this now? A silhouette of his profile. And then I get the bride merged in his silhouette, and then we get something like this in camera. And the more you look at it, the more it screws with your mind because you're like, is that her shoulder? Is that his shoulder? Is that her hair? Is that his hair? And it was really fun to create that in camera. I think too many of us rely on post-production I like to get it right and minimize what I do after the fact, but ultimately, it's just fun to play. Now, for those of you here, perhaps you're a little bit tired, maybe you want to wake up, but I've got a bit of a game. If you like what you've just seen, and perhaps you want a bit more of it, if I count to three and you guys clap, cheer, and freak out, all right, then maybe more people will come because they're thinking, oh my god, this guy must be amazing, and they'll all run here. So. If you're frustrated, you're tired, you're thirsty, you're hungry, let all your aggression out if you're excited. Let all your excitement on out come out. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to freak out and cheer and clap. You ready for me? <laughs> See, sometimes you just need a reason to clap and cheer and freak out and have a bit of fun. Physiology comes in, it, hel it helps the mental as well, so all is good. All right, guys, let me show you some more images. Now, here we see quite a traditional couple of images of guys and girls. Nothing fancy, just nice lighting, nice composition. Of course, triangular composition is very pleasing to the eye. But what happens if you want something a bit more interactive? Now, I am not, I'm a reactive photographer, as in I'll react to the situation, but I'll be proactive as well. As in, I like to make the moment, not just wait for it. So I, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great to have an interactive shot with all the bridal party having fun, looking at each other, almost like a Vanity Fair style wedding shoot. So I said, let me ask for it. So I'm going to show you how the next shot was created. Have a look. On her right side and cuddle her from behind. 
So now, let's say, where are we here? Can I have best man just here? Yes, I'm an Aussie. <laughs> Can I over here, mate, just on this side? Uh, Ali, yep. turn this way and just shuffle your feet in, and that's do, it. Do and now have, turn your bed. faces into each other this way. That looks like a bite. Ali, have you been nibbling your. <laughs> well, you're, you're a new wife. <laughs> biting her already. Scratch. <laughs> hey, gorgeous, I want you to come in here, come really close and cuddle up to the bride. Cuddle up to her. She's amazing. I should bring her hand just here. That's perfect. Uh, I'm going to have to maneuver you last minute to get you out of the flower there. And over here, mate, so a bit closer. And. Get in there. That's it. Just it's fine. I want you looking here, you looking there, you guys looking at each other, you guys looking into each other, you looking over here, you snuggling in, foreheads touching. Okay, you looking over there, and you looking over there. In that position that I, guys, in that position that I gave you, I need you giggling, I need you laughing, having fun, on the count of three. All right, now, important, everyone, please look at the place where I told you, do not look at me, bit of giggling, bit of fun. Um, cheer, I want to see you, mate. I want to see you cue leaning this way. Yeah, that's it, that's it. And we... And don't look at me! So if you look at that image, you might think, well, Jerry's so lucky to have a bridal party that's so fun and happy and he's just lucky. I'd like to think that the couple were lucky that they chose a photographer that would create the moment rather than just wait for it. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. If the magic is there, I will capture it all day long. If it's not there, I'll create it. For those of you who do shoot, either casually or professionally, even perhaps a friend of yours who just got married, tell me something. Out of 20 weddings that you've been to, how many of them were a fairy tale, truly? Were the couple that were effortlessly in love, the parents were still together, the priest was nice, the weather was good, there was plenty of time, and no one got drunk and did foolish things? You're still waiting. So maybe one out of 20 might be considered a fairy tale. So, I shoot photojournalistically when it's appropriate, like the ceremony reception, but on the other times, I create the moment. So I have a theory, whether the wedding day was a fairy tale or not, it'll be remembered as one if you hire Jerry Guionis to photograph it. So that's what I want to show you now, is show you some more shots and show you the triggers that I was talking about. This image here, it was really funny. I was going with a bride and groom. This wedding was actually in Houston, and we we're driving up a car park. For those of you in America, a car park. So we're actually driving up. I I'm one of you guys now. I'm actually an American citizen now myself. I married one of you. OK, so I'm American. Um, I'm Australian and a Greek background. So I have a, an identity crisis. The Olympics happen. I don't know who to root for. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, as we're driving up a car park to go on the roof of the building to photograph the cityscape, I took one photograph. And I'm like, this is just boring, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling this at all. On the way to the car park, I saw this orange wall. I've got a really cool idea for a photograph. So this is what I was presented with. I think most of you, if you are actual photographers watching right now, we probably would have got the bride maybe against the wall, turned her face to the light, done something like that. Perhaps the other half of us would have done something like this, just a silhouette um, against this. But I'm, I'm thinking there's something missing. It's a little bit static. I feel like there should be some movement. So I said to the bride and groom, hey guys, go for a dance, have some fun. And so they did. Can you see what's wrong with this picture? You see how the guy's standing very static? So there's movement in motion, but it's contradicting itself by him being static. So I'm saying, go for it. Now this one, the hands coming out of her head looks really weird. This one, we're almost there, pockets of light disrupting the photograph, but again, it's a problem. Then I said, lean forward, give me some energy, shifting towards the girl that you love. Now we're getting somewhere, but there's a shadow that's placed on him that doesn't look, look right, does it? And we play, we play, we turn, we turn. And I'm like, I'm sick of this. I should really just direct it because I'm sick of waiting for it to happen. Then she puts her hand out and I'm like, wait a second. Hold her hand. Then I'm thinking, hold on. We need something to come out of here, a bit of movement. So when they were there, I just said to her to kick her heel up. Now here's what's cool about this photograph. If you look at the actual, the mirroring of the shapes, it starts off straight, goes like this, same with his leg. It goes round, same with his head. It comes around, same as here. Then it comes down, and that perfectly fits in like a puzzle. So when you have repeating textures and shapes, it's very pleasing to the eye. Then she finally kicked her heel up, and you, you see the difference between that image and maybe where we started from. Make sense? So sometimes 
I find the difference between good and great could be something so small. Tell me something, who is the fastest runner in the world? Usain Bolt, right? Who came second? But he was only a fraction of a second away from him, but no one knows he got silver. What I'm getting at is the difference between someone great and maybe second place is literally bronze, silver, gold. Never heard of you. Who was that? Champion. Little things make the difference. We have to pay attention to detail. Guys, I want to show you a really fun shot that I did um, last year. I'll have a look at it, see how it was designed, and we'll talk about it. And tilt this time. Just throw it left and right. Suddenly bend that, and you suddenly bend that. As you go again. Love that. And now just. Thank you for the. <laughs> thank you to the three people that actually liked that, and everyone just went, oh, "Okay, all well, clapping." <laughs> no, thank you guys. Um, this was really fun. It was fun to do. The hard thing was is to picture the shot in your head as you were photographing it, because everything had to intertwine and be harmonious once it's done. But it was really, really fun to do. It was deep etched. We placed it in, and of course, we just meshed it in a little bit with the tones and the contrast. Um, what you're about to see now is actually one of my favourite photographs of all time. I. I I, this particular spot, I was there and I'm like, there's something magic in the air here. And I took my time. So I strongly encourage that if you are photographing, whether it's professionally, whether it's just a hobby for you, take your time, slow down. I hear too many people pick up a camera and go, like 50 shots. And which one are you going to pick? You're going to pick one. Take your time, slow down and do it right. Have a look. All right, darling, what I want you to do See how you're there perfectly centered towards me. I need you now to just, yeah, just to, that's it, perfect. Bloody hell, <laughs> shit looks amazing, huh? Just need a bit of hint of a light, so I'll give that. Can we close the doors? I want to see if the light is better because it's a bit too hot on the bottom of a dress. Yeah, 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 that's much better. Now, turn your face to the right now. That's it, and chin right up. And now, oh, Melissa, just need you to sort of fan out the veil perfectly evenly around her, so it's framing her. Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll put a towel underneath her head, underneath the dress up. And keep, keep, that, keep that sort of look down. Turn your face this way. Uh, probably her head. Probably just, on the, just to the lower part of her head, it, because it'll just help her without having to just... Turn your face towards me, darling. That's it, and chin up a bit more. That's it. Bring it sort of that way a little bit. Yeah, I need it, I need it sort of organised but dishevelled. You guys getting impatient sense. right now? You're thinking, you take the awesome photograph. There. Take your time, so you just guys. Go beyond it and then just push it in a little bit. That's it, just a little bit. That's it. This hand, just bring it away from you a little bit. Bring the elbow up a little bit. Perfect. That's it. Now turn your face gently to this way towards the light. Chin up a bit, darling. That's perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Done it. Okay. Close your eyes, Ellie. All right. So just hold my belt. That's it. Actually, that was <laughs> perfect, actually. Arch your back. So I didn't want to die, that's why my wife was holding my belt, because I actually wanted the perspective, I wanted this perspective. 
So I want to shoot down. And if you look at it closely, there's quite a bit of symbolism there. There's a, there's a keyhole. There's a wine decanter. Um, it looks like she's in a bubble bath. Some people say it looks like she's an angel sleeping on a cloud, but it was so fun to get, but I wouldn't have been able to have that perfectly balanced unless I took my time. The same wedding, it was the last shot of the day, and it was raining. And I'm like, what am I going to do with the rain? Let's have a look. Well, I, need, I need a dark background, otherwise it's not going to work. So let's go where the trees are. Babe, I'm going to get you here. Let's just test the flash. Okay. You are going to get soaked. It's the last shot of the day. You need to look at each other. Without passion in this photograph, it's just going to be nothing at all. I need you to look at each other like you're, freaking, you're hungry and you're each other's meals. <laughs> all right? Look at each other's lips. I want you perfectly front on. And then we're going to backlight it with flash. And as soon as we get it, we're done. OK? All I need is your faces. Now bring your hair behind your ears. Beautiful. I want you to face each other now and hold each other really close. Your hand on his chest there, darling. And that right hand down. Down. Now, come see how Johnny's closer to me than you. Come closer towards me. Stop. Now, I want you to lean. Both of you lean this way. Stop. That's it. Beautiful. Now, chin down a slight touch, Johnny. But don't tilt your head towards me. That's it. Leaning closer. Stop there. Look at each other's lips, guys. Now, that's it. Now, bring your hand up higher, darling. That's it. Chin down, gorgeous. Tilt your face towards me, mate, just a little bit. Stop. Go closer together. So how do we get that shot during the day? Well, I was looking for the darkest area of the actual area, and it was the dark trees. So I exposed for that first, got a dark background. Then I had my couple stand in the foreground with a little bit of ambience hitting them. I had my wife, Melissa, unfortunately, in the rain, with a flash right behind, six feet up higher, pointing the flash between them. Now, you notice what I did. Who has the best light here? Who has the best light? You would say he does, right? Why? They're a cute couple, but she may be shine brighter, so she, he needed a little bit of sexing up a little bit. So we got her a little bit close to the camera. The flash bounces on her face, then back on his face, and his cheek was the reflector. Make sense? Who's been to the Taj Mahal here? Who's been to the Taj Mahal? I bet you you've done this photograph. Yeah, everyone. Now, I'm a photographer. I've been photographing for 25 years, and there I was, in line, ready to go in that spot so I can take a reflection of this image and take that. Now, I found myself quite foolish. I'm like, I'm sitting there taking a postcard image that, that 3 billion people have taken before. What on earth are you doing? I asked my tour guide, I said, is there any vantage point of the Taj Mahal, perhaps where there's no one there or it's something a little bit different? And he said, yes, across the river, if we go at sunset, you will find this location. So I bought my wife a beautiful dress, and there we were taking this photograph. Isn't it a pain when you get to the Taj Mahal and that happens and they're fixing it? But anyway, this, the magic was still there. And then the most beautiful thing happened, a dust storm. This is what happened. All of a sudden, it was beautiful and rich and colorful. Now, if you're a photographer out there and watching at home, you're, you're a pro photographer, most of us would have probably have done this. You get your off-camera flash out and you take a shot like this. These are unedited straight from the camera for the moment. These are my rejects. And I take that shot, something was missing. And then I'm thinking, you know what I do is I'm going to actually pull back on the power of the flash, turn my white balance to shade, which will make the environment even warmer than it actually is with my own two eyes. I got my Nikon 180 camera, um, and you're about to see footage of when the exact shot was taken of the final image. Have a look. Did you see that little flash at the end? That was the shot. Have a look. Now, when many of us do this kind of shot, we have evidence of that shadow on the ground, and it, it, it takes away the reality of it. The key to is have maybe, in some situations, of course, enough flash to make it look real and feel real. And I zoomed the flash head so the light only hit most of her body, but not the ground. 
and then those tones blend in with that beautiful sandstorm, and that's like a one in a million shot. I'll never get it again. Um, as Mike Carrada mentioned, I was very fortunate to be chosen to actually represent the wedding and the fashion genre last year to actually champion the Nikon D850. And many to believe one of the greatest cameras ever made, and I certainly believe that myself. You're about to see the actual fashion video that actually was part of the, the shots. After we see the video, I'm going to show you a few shots that were created. Have a look. My name is Jerry Guionis. I'm a wedding portrait fashion photographer based in Melbourne, Australia and Las Vegas, USA. Been using the D850 and putting it through its paces to really test the power and the quality of the camera. For me, fashion photography is a sensibility, a feeling, a culture, that it's cinematic, it's theatrical, it's dramatic. The brief was, we want colour, texture, movement. It has to be fashion. It was really fun and exhilarating to, to be able to have the freedom to create. We are in Las Vegas, we are an incredible aerial gym. So what we're starting with is incredible colour, incredible textures and beautiful movement. So it'll be soft and it's going to be romantic. Texture and detail is going to be everything for this camera. And let's see what we get. Yes, that's the one. From the first person to the last person, there's probably the metre. And look, every single girl is perfectly sharp. I can't tell you how excited I am at the moment. This is a dream come true. We've got like seven models, we've got performers, we've got this incredible Hollywood set. If you're ever gonna do a billboard, if ever you're gonna enlarge something and you want perfect, crisp detail, it would be here. Here's the best compliment that I can give to this camera combined with nickel lenses, and that is this. It was effortless. Effortless communication between lens and body. The sharpness was effortless. The color coming straight from the camera, I don't know what to do with it. What, how would I post-process it? It was practically perfect in camera. That was epic. Oh, wow. The biggest thing that I noticed with the Nikon camera system, that it renders the colors realistically. It takes photographs with what I see with my own two eyes. I look at the back of the camera and I'm seeing what I believe to be the finished result. We zoomed up to the images, the detail in the highlights, full sun, the detail in deep shadow, the color that was brought from the camera straight out of camera was incredible. That was truly breathtaking to witness everyone's genuine excitement. So guys, it was a, thank you darling, thank you, thank you Linda. <laughs> um, it was really fun, it was a fun shoot, but I'm telling you now that to have the power of a medium format camera with the tangibility of a DSLR was quite incredible. My first camera, in fact, was a Mamiya RB67. You know what those look like? They're huge. My first digital camera was a Kodak DCS 760, and that was that one that looked like a brick. And now you have these small cameras, you can do whatever you want so easily and effortlessly. So I took this next shot and I'm like, you know, it's been done before. The fashion models and ladders, it's been done. I wanted to break the mold a little bit and add a little bit of secret sauce to it. This just shows you behind the scenes, by the way. So I got to know, I actually live here in Las Vegas now, um, and I got to know a lot of Cirque du Soleil performers. And I met this really cool guy who spent his whole life dedicated to balancing and performing on a ladder. Can you imagine? So I thought, he looks like a modern day um, Charlie Chaplin. And that was a shot unbeknownst to the girls. He was doing what he was doing from behind and we we're having lots of fun. It was really, really cool. Then I had this crazy idea. I thought, I said to my wife, can we find a, a pink parachute? Let's uh, get some yellow balloons and have some fun with it. And she sourced everything for me. I was like a kid in a candy store. It was so much fun. And what I encourage you to do, whether you're shooting just as a hobbyist or a professional, many of us shoot one dimensionally. We see something and we just shoot this way. I encourage you to do this. Press the pause button and walk all around and you just might see something very, very different. That was simply a change of perspective. And then when I was there, although this next shot wasn't really even on the cards, I've always wanted to do a Hollywood setup, like glorifying the, back, the background, glorifying the stands and all those things. And then we ended up getting this shot. 
It was so much fun. This one I love because you've got the, all the prime colors. You've got the blues, the yellows, the reds, the greens, and the color was amazing. One of the performers said, oh, by the way, Jerry, I can balance on a champagne bottle. I'm like, you can do what? She goes, yeah, let me show you. I'm like, okay, fine. Go for it. Do it. Like, is that insane to you? <laughs> I think most of us here would just drink it, but uh, that's all good. This next image is a beautiful location actually here in Las Vegas. And it was beautifully ornate, quite incredible. And it was perfect to show off the detail of the D850. You see how important the gaps between the arms are on the body makes the arms look slimmer. Shifting the hip one way or the other provides more shape. And what I, one of the amazing features of this camera is that you can actually shoot a raw square file. Because I love square format. It's got a beautiful charm to it, so you can actually shoot square. This next image, in fact, I put it next to the mirror, and I was thinking I was just going to get the actual reflection. Now, if you can see, she has a window to the left of her and behind her, and I'm like, this is a studio setup. We've got a perfect little accent light behind her, perfect sort of light in front of her. Then we added the groom just and shot at the 105 millimeter 1.4. Look at that plane of focus running down her eye and her lips and everything else is soft. That little kiss of light on the top right, that little gap above the ear, this beautiful detail here sort of pushing your eye in was so much fun. Remember that shot that I showed you with the rain, backlit flash with rain? This time I changed my angle and then I allowed some light to bounce off his face the same way I did last time in this case. When you see Christmas lights, just know they look incredible out of focus. And then, have you ever seen that smoke, that, that atmosphere in a can stuff that you spray and it looks like atmosphere and it's non-toxic? So we sprayed some of that. I said something, made them laugh, took the shot. He was in shadow, but the flash bounced off his face properly now and went on her, and then we got this shot. And she's perfectly sharp right where she needs to be, which is the eye closest to the camera. So it's amazing when you start thinking outside the box that you can actually look at situations and in different ways. You can see natural reflectors in your environment and work with what's there. Then there was a mirror, a beveled mirror. Most of us maybe have one beveled mirror at home. So there's a mirror, there's a little angle and a bevel. If you shoot in the corner of it, you'll get three reflections. This is what I got here. So that was done in camera, backlit with flash, and we got that. Then finally, we're right there, we're finishing up, all the gear was getting put in the cars, and we basically allowed some light to come through, and then we used the Christmas lights in the background, and we balanced that beautiful daylight coming through with the Christmas lights. Then finally what happened, we're running out of time, and I wanted to photograph a shot of this guy that I promised all day. Now, he had abs, like, you know the, the kind of guy that walks in front of you and it makes you feel like less of a man? Gives you self-esteem issues? He was that guy. So anyway, he had abs, like, I don't know if he had six-pack, he had eight-pack, I don't even know what he had. So we undid his shirt, opened it up a little bit, and the reflector got already got put in the car, but we had to get out of there. If we went out of there, like, in two minutes, we had to pay more. I'm like, all right. So I got my assistant to, can you imagine, like, the sun's coming through, my assistant took off his jacket. I said, stand there. The sunlight hit the back of the guy, hit my assistant's white shirt, and the light on this guy is the light bouncing off his white shirt on his face. Have a look. So it's quite incredible that if you had to use something, if you had to do something with what you have and the elements around you, you might just be forced to create and think a little bit differently. And that's what I encourage you guys, is to think differently. Actually, who's a professional right here? Who's actually shoots for a living? Anyone shoot for a living here? Or are you all just hobbyists? You just love, love for cameras? My encouragement to you, if you're watching at home, if you're here in this room right now and you're watching this, it's really, really fun. Don't just sit there and take, take your actual iPhone out and, and tap your, your phone. Think about where the direction of light's coming from. Best advice I can give you, if the light's over here, turn the face up to the light. If, if someone's maybe a little bit fuller in the body, actually put the camera a little bit higher. It'll stretch out their face. Make sense? All these things can make a difference. Ultimately, make sure you print your photographs. 
A photograph, I believe, isn't real unless it's printed. Too many of us are swiping our memories into oblivion. We swipe the photographs and we delete photographs. Can you tell me how many, how many of you actually print your photographs? Print them physically. Yeah? A few of you. Respectfully, most of you have said, put your hand up, you've got some grey hair on you. Most of you who are younger, perhaps you haven't printed a single photograph from your life ever. What I'm saying is we are missing a generation in print. Can you imagine in 20, 30 years? My strong encouragement to you in this room, those watching at home, is to print your photographs. Preserve the legacy. If you're an amateur, if you're a pro, you are a historian. Unfortunately, too many of us swipe the memories away, and guess what? No one cares about photographs a day after they're taken. Some apps are even built that delete themselves after 24 hours, but no one cares about those memories until someone dies. Make sense? So why don't we shoot with the hindsight while everyone's alive and healthy and well and having fun? All I say to you is have fun with your camera, preserve those memories, and that's a great thing to do. Wish you all the boss. best. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ladies guys. and gentlemen, Jerry Guiones. Coming up next at 3.15, Corey Rich capturing timeless home.